To my explainer tonight, as Kenya hosts the inaugural Climate Change Summit, there has been much talk about carbon credits and their sale. What are they? Who has them? How and where are they traded? And how do they contribute to reducing the effects of climate change? Well, before we begin, some context is important, right? So it has been agreed that greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide warm up the atmosphere and of course uh, lead to the damaging effects of um, the atmosphere and the earth and they limit the earth's ability to cool itself and this is what leads to the damaging effects on climate that we have witnessed. Ice caps melting, floods, drought and other effects which is why at the Paris Climate Summit in 2015 190 nations signed up to the Paris Agreement and committed to reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and limiting the global temperature increase to below 2 degrees Celsius. Now this historic agreement was actually preceded in fact by the Kyoto Protocol of 1997 where it was also decided that a carbon credit proposal was mooted to reduce carbon emissions. Now later in Marrakesh in Morocco, they spelled out how the system would work. So now that we have that background, just what are carbon credits? Well, if you take a look at it in some rather simple terms, carbon credits are simply buying permission to pollute. See, if you are a company whose business and production processes are necessarily polluting because of the nature of your business, then you find a place or another country or another company that is doing work to clean the environment. So let's say you cannot avoid polluting where you are. So you pay somebody else, someplace else, who is doing work to reverse the effects of your own actions that are damaging the environment. So you are emitting carbon dioxide into the environment, which we have agreed is all warming up the earth and causing the negative effects we have all witnessed and experienced. But to offset your actions, you are paying someone who is working on removing or absorbing that carbon dioxide from the air. That person could be doing that through planting trees, which if you remember our science classes back in primary school, trees absorb carbon dioxide from the air for their own photosynthesis. Or perhaps they could be investing in renewable energy like we're doing here in Kenya. So the next question is, so how much do carbon credits cost? Each permit or carbon credit is equivalent to one ton of carbon dioxide that is emitted into the environment. Each company, depending on their size and nature of business, has and its determined emissions into the atmosphere is assigned a number of permits. They can trade these and also if they do not emit as much carbon dioxide as had been initially estimated, they can sell those permits to others. Now, the World Bank estimates that each ton of carbon dioxide should cost between $40 and $80. This is based on the Paris Climate Agreement. But most of the time, the price is far lower than this. And we shall talk about why the trading system and the pricing is considered particularly problematic by many countries, including Kenya, in a moment. But first, how does the trade of carbon credits actually work? Well. First, it's important to note that carbon credits are an intangible commodity. The carbon credit system is not as regulated as other markets, and they are traded in what is known as a voluntary market. Secondly, companies don't deal with each other directly. There are companies in between, brokers or middlemen, if you like. One way of understanding this is how we deal with maize in this country, right? The farmer has the commodity, which is maize, and there is a buyer at the other end of the chain, that's at the market. Now we have brokers who get the commodity from the one who owns it, they incur their transportation and storage costs, and then they get that commodity to the buyer who's at the other end. Now the cost of the broker that the broker bought the maize from at the farmer is not the same cost he will sell it to the one at the market. Similarly, the carbon credit trade system is aligned. It is the companies trading in them that get to decide what the price of the carbon credits will be in an unregulated voluntary market system. And this is what we've been saying 
is problematic. Many are raising issues with this. This is because the market forces are still skewed to those on the other side of the world. They are the ones who are recognized, certified, and it's according to their standards, not ours. In fact, one rallying call from President Ruto on this has been to find a better way to decide the price. This is his argument. He says, we in this part of the world who are engaging in climate-friendly practices from growing trees to using renewable energy are the ones with something to sell. And yet, we are not the ones deciding the price. So his argument has been that we should have a say in the cost of the carbon credits. Now, um, Kenya does in fact have a lot to offer in this trade. Though we're one of the smallest polluters in the world, contributing to less than 1% of the world's emissions, we have also done quite some work in offsetting the effects of the work of others. And that is why in June this year, a group of 16 companies from Saudi Arabia bought more than 2.2 million tons of carbon credits in a Kenyan auction that was billed as the world's largest sale of its kind. Now, like we've said, it's not a perfect system, right? There are questions about who is setting the price and the standards, that those in the other part of the world who are causing the pollution are the ones setting these standards, while the ones who are offsetting the actions and the owners of the carbon credits are not getting their fair share. Bottom line of this carbon credit approach is this. It is a recognition that most human beings are motivated when there is money involved. Lessons that have been learned from years of trying to tackle this is that forcing people to do things and make commitments to reduce the effects of climate change is not as easy. In fact, attempts to compel governments to commit to these things has proven difficult. And this is because all countries are sovereign. You cannot impose everything on them. They have their own domestic policies. They have their own domestic priorities. And so it was thought that if you do two things, one, involve the private sector, and two, inject some money into it, then you might move the needle a little bit on the commitments that have been made to tackling climate change, and in particular, reducing greenhouse gas emissions. That's why it was decided to put in place what are called market mechanisms that would incentivize people and companies to save the environment in ways as they make some profit. Now this concept, like we said, is problematic for some climate activists, even as they argue that it is a measurable approach. The challenges have been raised is this one of being voluntary and therefore not binding Two, the fact that one continues to pollute simply because they can offset their actions elsewhere also remains a problem. Activists say that the agreement should go beyond paying somebody else to solve the problems that you are causing, but that you should also be bound to change your own processes and make them green and beneficial to the environment. Of course, thirdly, like we've said, is who regulates the carbon credit trade? Who decides the terms of the sale or the trade? Who decides the price of the carbon credit? And that is why there is proposed legislation in this country. Kenya is seeking to regulate the carbon credit trade. Now, the bill is known as the Carbon Credit Trading and Benefit Sharing Bill 2023. It seeks to do a number of things establish a regulatory framework for the trading of carbon credits and benefit sharing of the same. It also hopes to establish a carbon credit trading benefit authority and to register and regulate carbon trading businesses and also set up a tribunal that would mediate disputes in the market. It finally hopes to introduce clarity on some of the issues and put Kenya on the world map as a market leader in the carbon space and establish the growth of carbon projects in the country and beyond. So in a nutshell, that's carbon credit, it's carbon credit trading and the way forward for Kenya and hopefully Africa. That's my explainer tonight.